we get to see for the first time the main group of characters go on an adventure together. <laughs> it's a sequel <laughs> and it's a trilogy. And this is the last movie. And this is the first time they're going on an adventure together. JJ Abrams, you suck. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sporking News Podcast. My name is Scott. If you like it, you like uh, sci-fi, if you like fantasy, Star Wars, Game of Thrones, things of that nature, please hit that subscribe button, ding the bell. Uh, YouTube ain't helping me grow, so it's a grassroots roots movement. Please help me out. Thank you. On to the show. <laughs> On to the show. So I found this article on Deadline. Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. J.J. Abrams shares extended clip and talks Palpatine. Cast says final chapter pays amazing tribute to Carrie Fisher at CCXP. This is by Dino Ray Ramos. So, <clears throat> yeah. So down in San Pablo, I believe it is, uh, they have that CCXP, which has gotten huge. Um they're going to be dropping a Wonder Woman 1984 video uh, trailer today, which I saw a teaser of that. That looks pretty cool. But also the cast and director of Star Wars was down there. So let's see what they had to say. Wish I could bring it up on screen, people, but I'm just learning how to edit. So <laughs> bear with me. I'm learning. <laughs> um, we are mere weeks away from the release of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, and ticket sales suck. But <laughs> it's not in there. Uh, but, as, but as Disney and Lucasfilm close the final chapter of, chapter of this saga, so sad. Director J.J. Abrams, as well as stars Diz, Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, and Oscar Isaac took the dais at CCXP, I swear I'm not drunk, I just can't speak today, to share the end of the adventure with the passionate fans in Sal San Paolo. It's the light and the dark side, said Abrams, who was the first on stage before the actors. Because, you know, he thinks he's the focus of everything he does. I've Anybody else notice that? Please leave that in the comments below. He truly thinks he's the star. You know, he thinks he's a Spielberg who never put himself out like that. He would do interviews and stuff. Lucas would do interviews and stuff. Uh, but, you know, even Scorsese and and uh, people like that, like massive directors, they never, like he thinks he's the star. And it's just aggravating. Um, on the dark side, I can't wait to see what you see between Palpatine and the characters. We shouldn't see anything, but Palpatine should be dead. <laughs> Uh, for the light side, it's about friendship. We get to see, for the first time, the main group of characters go on an adventure together for the first time. The first time in a trilogy, they're going on an adventure together. You know, it took halfway through, not even, I don't know, if you know, uh, in A New Hope, I would say a third of the way through, they're together. Third of the way? Yeah, they're together. They rescue Princess Leia, Han, Luke, trash compactor fun for the family you know what i mean and it just it, it's the adventure we wanted and and it goes on for you know two and a half more movies we have not seen you know i i heard these guys together i've heard daisy ridley say you know in a that featurette friendship you know this is like oh oscar oscar is great because you know this is the first time we're really ever filming together you know like i think they say hello in one other at the end of Flash Jedi, you know, like this is ridiculous. Like this should have been it. It should have been the first, you know, Force Awakens should have been Han, Luke, Leia together with these characters and slowly move Han and Luke and Leia out and let these guys take over midway through the last movie. Okay. And then this could have gone on. They could have made billions. I mean, they're going to make billions. We all know they're going to make money off this movie, but they could have really crushed it. People were dying for this stuff. And now you're finally putting these characters together. It's ridiculous. Abrams then shared a feature, a feature at detailing the Star Wars journey with the crowd filled with lightsabers, Ooh, laser swords. The video was an emotional look at the iconic sci-fi franchise since A New Hope when the featurette ended, Ridley, Boyega, and Isaac stepped out on stage to uproaring ovation. See, that's another thing that bothers me. They have been tapping into the OG. Um, 
they have been trying to bring up that nostalgia. Oh, my light just went out. <laughs> I'm not going to fix it. Okay, I fixed it. So I love editing. It's so great. Anyways, <clears throat> so they've been using the OG characters, clips to bring that nostalgia feel back to us, to make us remember why we love Star Wars. We didn't need the reminding. We know why we love Star Wars. And I know there's a huge set of fans out there that enjoy these last two movies. And this is not an attack on them. So stop your whining on my comments, you know, about eh, you're toxic. Me, 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 me. I am not attacking you. What I'm attacking is what Disney did to my legacy characters, to my uh, fantasy, to my sci-fi. They have been doing it since day one. They took it they didn't understand it and all they wanted to do was market it. Okay. I understand they need to make money. I get that, but show respect to what has come before like the Mandalorian. I'm not a big fan of that show, but at least they are respecting star Wars. They are not trying to, you know, they do throw out those nostalgia berries as people call it, but they're not, it works for the most part. In that show here, they're using it to react, get a reaction, to get a feeling out of you, to make you remember how much you loved Star Wars so that when you do go to this movie, that's what you're thinking about. Oh, Han, Luke and Leia, you know, and oh, these guys kind of remind me of them. Not at all. Okay. And that's not an attack on the actors either. These actors are great people. I actually like, I like them. I like them in other things they've done, but for this, it sucks. All right, on to what else I was reading. Oi, Brazil! Boyega explain, exclaimed to the crowd as they got even as they got even impossibly louder. Oh, because they're so excited. Later in the panel, Abram shared an exclusive extended clip from the film for the CCXP crowd. In it, we see Ray, Finn, Poe, Chewbacca, C-3PO, and BB-8 on a desert planet on the run from a group of stormtroopers. Where's R2, man? <laughs> Why? We aren't too sure, but it leads to speculation. speculators chase scene through... Uh, oh, excuse me. God, I suck. Spectacular chase scene through valley and sand terrain so we've seen that footage i believe already you know they fly they fly they fly <sighs> yeah they fly i mean jetpacks have been in clone wars have been in the prequels have been in uh the originals i mean yes they fly i mean this is the same group that you know whatever anywho one wow moment to be to know is that we see stormtroopers with jetpack? Oh, here we go. Jetpacks who get launched into the air. They fly now, Finn asks, to which Poe responds, They fly now. <laughs> one by one, each of the group pulls their weight, picking off the chasers, even BB 8. Let's just skip this. Uh, the cast shared the first memories of Star Wars, their journey since The Force Awakens, and how it it's like saying goodbye to the characters that have become iconic in pop culture fandom. Have they? Iconic? Uh, iconic? I don't know. Maybe that'll take 10 to 15 years from now, but iconic? I mean, is, is Jar Jar iconic? Maybe for the wrong reasons. Like, I don't consider any of these characters iconic. You know, Luke, iconic up until they destroyed him in the last movie. Uh, Han, iconic up until they destroyed him in Force Awakens. Leia, she's iconic, you know, and it's sad that we don't get her story, but, um, you know, God rest her soul. It's this time of year, you know, that it happened. And it's, it's very sad for some of us to think we never will get the three of them again. <clears throat> uh, Abrams, Ridley, Boyega, and Isaiah also addressed how Carrie Fisher, Leia, is folded into the final film and the legacy she left behind. We all felt her presence every day when we were on set, and we still feel it now, said Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaac? I can't say his name. Anyways, Isaac. We couldn't tell the Skywalker saga without her. Of course you couldn't. She was a Skywalker. 
Abrams chimed in saying that they could have used a digital version of her, but admitted Carrie would have never approved, which is true because Carrie was a badass. Instead of digitizing her or recasting, they used a number of shots from footage they didn't use. We all love Carrie and Leia and we'll see her in the film. And I just hope that eight minutes we keep hearing about of footage from the previous movies is um, done, done right, done respectfully and with quality because she deserves it. In addition, we will see more familiar faces from the Star Wars canon. Of course you will, because they need to pull from the past to make any of these movies good. Um, <laughs> McDermott's Palpatine. Abrams teased that his role in this inst installment is important, and we will get to see why he is the way he is and what that means for Ray and the gang. He should be dead. Anyways... We also get to see the return of Billy D. Williams in Lando Calrissian, who Abrams wanted to bring back in Force Awakens, but was excited to have him return in The Rise of Skywalker. He is so debonair and charismatic, said Isaac of Williams. For me, he was my favorite character. He went on to point out that he appreciated that he was a person of color in the franchise, and it wasn't something we saw often in sci-fi films, which it wasn't in uh, up until that point, except for, I don't know, what was that? Uh, Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. Diversity. Yeah. You destroyed that too. You remember? <laughs> for Boyega, he said that Lando was the coolest guy in the galaxy. He added Finn's excited reaction to meeting Lando in the movie was my real reaction to meeting him in real life. Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker opens theaters December 20th. I'm sorry. I'm hitting things. I'm aggravated. Um, once again, JJ <clears throat> Abrams is a hack. Okay. Uh, he starts movies off great. Okay. I love that first Star Trek, you know, the Calvin line one he did. And I get, um, why Star Trek fans did not, I am not a diehard Trekkie. I watched some of the shows as a younger kid, but I'm not a diehard. I just liked watching them for the spectacle of what they were in the story and the, and and I liked how what he did in the first, he just rebooted it without destroying the other storyline where it could be living off in its own world I, or its own universe. I get that. But he destroyed that franchise in the next two films. Okay. Khan could have been amazing. You had an amazing actor playing Khan. You lied about him being Khan. Anyways, this is not about Star Trek. Star Wars meant something to many of us. It still means something. I will not allow them to take that from me. They will not take the original Star Wars away from me. Okay. Prequels. I've grown to appreciate them more as I gotten older because I really do enjoy the fall of a, a democracy to a dictatorship. Um, but these new ones, I can't see myself 10 years from now enjoying them. Okay. A Force Awaken reboot soft reboot, if you want to call it, of A New Hope. Um, I wish that they did Last Jedi as a soft reboot of um, Empire Strikes Back, but no. Ryan Johnson decided he knew better than all of us, and he destroyed, destroyed our mythos, destroyed our characters, destroyed our franchise. And Abrams isn't a finisher, man. So I can't see this. I just see this as so much. They're going to throw out everything they can in the kitchen sink. All the leaks are starting to become aware that they're real. Um, just like Game of Thrones season eight, they're all real. And no matter how much they tell us they're not, you know, they are. They're, they were still shooting up until a week ago. So you tell me, are you excited for this truly? Are you excited to watch it just burn? I'm going to go see this movie. I don't even want to, but I'm taking my wife who is not a fan at all. Okay. She's amazing, but she is not a fan of what I love sci-fi and fantasy. And I, I want to get her, her feeling on it. I want her to watch the first two movies of this franchise because I don't even know if she's seen the prequel. She's probably like casually, you know, um, casually seen the OG movies but I just want to see what she feels about just these sequels and then get that reaction on film. But uh, happy Sunday, everybody. And I hope uh, you have a great one today. I hope you don't have a cold like me. 
And uh, tonight, I believe I might be on uh, the great Chris Knight's uh, 3000K review of the Mandalorian's roundtable with some awesome people. Uh, Comics division, if you're not watching him, I don't know why you're not. The guy is hilarious, even though he doesn't try to be. Um, Bear, 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 nerd fun. Uh, I don't know if Stephen Walton will be on there, but check us all out. Uh, Final Death Star. We are the fourth wave. We are fandom. We are together with you guys. Let's stop fighting each other. And let's just realize that we all have different opinions. And we just are the type that are vocal about it because that's who we are. All right. And uh, remember, if they start calling you names, they've already lost the war. Take care, everybody. <laughs>